What do you think? I think I'm the luckiest guy on the planet Earth. No, I mean about the catcher. The opener's in two days. Okay, let's take a look at his stick. Fisher! Grab a bat! Okay, coach. Hey, Johnny! Take a break. I don't want you getting sore. Okay, coach. Hilger! I didn't think they played baseball at Jefferson. Relax. This won't take long. Looks like we've got another walk on. So what are we doing? Putting ads in the paper? How'd you like to play some baseball? I'd like that very much, sir. Time in Japan, my man. Ooh, Hops, Hops, you look magnificent. What has gotten into you, Penhall? Spring. Spring is here and I'm playing baseball. Yeah, well, the feds are here and you're going to be playing the unemployment line if you don't get your butt into Fuller's office right now. Hops, you should have seen me out there today. I was whacking the ball, man. I was connecting like... Like a guy batting against high school pitching? <laughs> I need this from a Cubs fan. The most loyal fans of all. Well, let me know when they win a pennant. Get in there. You make the team? Yeah. Been at Lincoln a week. Made the baseball team. Somebody want to tell me what's going on? I'll ask the question. This is Spencer Phillips. He's with the feds. How come you guys always have names like corporations? This your crack undercover unit? I don't think I like your attitude. Why don't you call my supervisor and let him know what you think? There's a player on your team named Johnny Hartman. Yeah, pitcher. Guy's unbelievably good. They say he's big league material. They're probably right. We have reason to believe he's a kidnap target. What's so important about this kid? I'm sorry, I can't tell you that. The details on this case are strictly on a need-to-know basis. And us small-time local cops have no need to know. That's right. I can tell you that if there's a move against Hartman, It'll occur in the next 72 hours. All right, what happens in 72 hours? I can't tell you that. <laughs> Why do you need us at all? You think you could tell us that? 
We can't stay as close to Hartman as you people can. We have agents protecting him at night and at home. But we have no juvenile operatives in our department. That's because them crew cuts always give you guys away. The department thanks you in advance for your cooperation. Please. Don't disappoint us. Charming guy. All right. Pinhole, you with Hartman on the field. Hoffs, I'm putting you into most of his classes. Hanson and Ioki will back you up. Should we tell them, or are they on a need-to-know basis? I can't tell you that. <laughs> Blown away. Your dad called. Great. He's coming into town. You tell him where we live? Nice, very nice. He just wants to meet Coach Wilson, look over the scholarship offers. I thought we decided we could handle all that. He wants to come to the game on Thursday. He can do whatever he wants. He's proven that over and over again, hasn't he? Very good, Mr. Hartman. Very good indeed. Uh, I'd like you all to take a look at Mr. Hartman's paper. I've taken the liberty of Xeroxing it. That's embarrassing. Just pass these back, please. Now, not only has Mr. Hartman written a wonderful essay on the Volstead Act, that's a prohibition to those of you who slept through class last Tuesday, but he's also proven a point I've long been trying to get across to both the administration and the student body of Lincoln High. And that is, that just because one excels on the athletic field does not necessarily mean one cannot excel in the classroom as well. Isn't that right, Mr. Muller? I'm sorry, what was the question? <laughs> I rest my case. <laughs> you were in my last class. You following me or something? Maybe. Judy Robinson. I just transferred in. Today's my first day. Johnny Hoffman, transferred in the fall. Oh, I know who you are. You're a legend around here. 1.07 ERA, 110 strikeouts in 10 games last season. A baseball fan? Cub fan. Oh, painful. Loyal. <laughs> maybe you want to come out and watch a real team play. Mm, maybe. Hit the showers. Fisher? I'm sorry, Coach. This is the layoff. Hey, it's baseball, son. You don't have to run more than 90 feet at a time. Why do you coaches always make us run wind sprints? Tradition. <laughs> Look, Fisher, I'm penciling you into the starting lineup for Thursday. Really? Whitaker? Yes, really. Are you going to catch Hartman? So start spending more time with him and make sure you've got the signals down pat. Okay. Whitaker, you're starting at short. Now watch the stuff hit to your right. You're taking an extra step before you throw to second. Okay? Yes, sir. Doug Fisher. Jake Whitaker. Two transfers, two starters. Not to mention Hartman last year. Somebody up there must like me. So you're gonna be catching Hartman, huh? Yeah, is he amazing or what? 145 pounds and all of an arm. Another five years, we'll be trading his baseball card. <laughs> so, what do you say we grab some dinner? Don't you have a girlfriend? Mm, not that I can remember. You got a problem? Yeah, I'm sick of you guys making the team. Hey! What's the matter with you? Enough. What's the beef here? Nothing, Coach. We were just uh, arguing about who had a better fastball, Gooden or Valenzuela. Yeah, right. You okay, Hennessy? Yeah. Mm hmm. The next time you want to question the lineup, you knock on my door. Yes, sir. All right, listen up. Post-game party in the cafeteria immediately following the opener on Thursday. Right. 
All right, parents, girlfriends, everybody's invited. We got a good thing going here. We could have a terrific season. I know the team's been in transition, what with uh, Hartman coming in last season and Whitaker and Fisher, but they're all a part of this ball club, and I want them made to feel that way, all right? Okay. Uh, no practice tomorrow. See you all Thursday, an hour before game time. Nice move there. I can take care of myself. Yeah, I'm sure you can. So you're from back east? Yeah. Me too. New York. Hmm. How do you like it out here? Same as anywhere, I guess. Yeah? Wanna grab some dinner or something tonight? Uh, no thanks. Got a date. So there I am, standing in front of my locker, when my father comes up to me and says, somebody here would like to meet you. I turn around, and there is Scott Peterson. From the Yankees? Live in person. I am 16 years old, and there is my idol wanting to meet me. Get out of here! What did he say? He said, um, I hear you got a great arm, kid. And I say, you're not so bad yourself. <laughs> You said that to Scott Peterson. Yeah, the guy strikes out 300 hitters in one season, and I say, you're not so bad yourself. <laughs> oh, man, what else, what else, what else? Oh, usual stuff, you know, um, stay in school, get good grades, stay off drugs. <laughs> stay off the drugs, huh? Yeah, yeah, good advice. Two years later, he gets busted in the Kansas City airport and spends six months in rehab. Heroes. So, who are you? What are you talking about? What's your real name? Judy Robinson. Look, you can play it any way you want, but I know you're some kind of cop. Or fed. Or something. You show up in all my classes, you buddy up with the baseball talk, you come out to practice. It's about my father, right? Johnny, I don't know anything about your father. I hope you're telling the truth. Because I would like to think of you as a friendly girl rather than a nosy cop. Oh, my God. Johnny, what's the matter? What's going on? Is my mother all right? Yeah, she's fine. This gentleman was sneaking around the house. Uh, he says he's a teammate of yours. He is. Hey, man, you left your glove on the bench. I just came by to bring it to you. Thanks. I'll see you out. These guys work for my dad. They get a little paranoid every now and then. No kidding. I just want to toss this in my locker. What makes you think this Jake Whitaker wasn't just returning the glove like he said? Johnny remembers leaving the glove in his locker. Tell me about him. Well, there's something definitely weird about the guy. He flew off the handle in the locker room and nearly slung this guy 20 feet across the room. What else? Well, he's got good range to the left, above average arm, and he steps in the bucket on the inside pitch. Johnny said he transferred in about a week ago and made the team just like that. Keep an eye on him. Shouldn't be too hard. He bats ahead of me. Hanson! Aoki! You get any more info out of Phillips? You're kidding me. Want you two to check out a student named Jake Whitaker. He's a um, shortstop on the Lincoln High team. What do you want, batting average, uh, fielding percentage, what? Just get hold of his transcripts, Hanson. Okie dokie. OK. Is that all? Almost. There is one more thing. Johnny Hartman knows I'm a cop. I didn't give it up or confirm it or anything, Captain. He just figured it out. 
Your cover is blown on the first day and you treat it like an afterthought? It's really no problem, really. Johnny's totally cool with it. In fact, it sounds like it's routine to him. It's all has something to do with his father. He kind of let that slip. Frank Hartman? Doesn't ring any bells. All right, stay with it. You found out more in a day than the feds will tell us in a month. Well, okay, that's it. Get to school. You coming to the opener? You ready? I'm dedicating my first home with you. You know, I bet I can bat about 340 in this league. Banged up my arm pretty good. Nobody oh, down at the nurse's station. My! Everybody's down at the game. Let me open it up for you. Oh, thanks.
Fisher. Just ease up. Just meet the ball. Anybody want me to say hi to you when I'm rounding the bases? They'll all be in college, buddy. Take long showers. We well, pitched real well, son. Thanks. So, uh, how was your mother holding up? Not bad, all things considered. Hey. <laughs> so, is this your father? Yeah, uh, Judy Robinson, Frank Harper. My pleasure. Nice to meet you. That's quite a picture you grew there. Oh, yeah. Quite a picture. Johnny Hartman, I'd like you to meet my mother. Nice to meet you. This is the one I was telling you about. One of these days, he's going to be in the big leagues. <laughs> From your mouth to God's ear. Frank Hartman. Grace Whitaker. You must be very proud. You have no idea. If uh, you all will excuse me for a minute. So, Jake tells me that you just moved here, too. Yeah, about a year ago. Mm-hmm. Where from? Back east. Oh, we're from back east. I'm from back east. The city. Connecticut. We moved around a lot. I'd say about 20 colleges and all. Not to mention a few pro scouts that would like to see the boy go straight into the minor leagues. No, no, no. Forget that. I want him to play at least two years of college ball first. I think that's a good idea. Good. I want you to handle all that. You find a school with a good baseball program and a coach that won't throw his arm out. And don't worry, I take care of my kids. Now, there's, uh, there's something else I'd like to ask you. <laughs> sure. You're gonna find it strange because we've never met before. But I want you to accept what I'm about to say without asking any questions. What are you talking about? If anything should happen to me, I mean, if I should get in an accident or something, I want you to look out for my kid. I don't understand. No questions. I want you to look out for Johnny and his baseball career. You make sure that he stays on track, that he stays in school. 
and that he works his butt off when he gets down to the miners. You're a good man, Mr. Wilson. I, mean, I chose Lincoln High and, and your program for very specific reasons. You take care of the baseball, as Mother will take care of the rest. Look. Please, no questions. You'll be very well compensated for your time and effort. It's all been arranged. I can't believe this. What's up, bad news? There's no record of a Jack Whitaker at the New York City School mentioned in his transcript. Great, where'd this guy come from? Well, that's what they want us to find out. Who? The fats, Hanson. They want us to go into the guy's house. They must be serious. They got a no-knock warrant in 20 minutes. That's your government at work, Aokich. Not exactly better homes and gardens, huh? Yeah. I'll check the bedroom. All right. Look at this. Paid her a grand to pose as my mother. She brought in her electric bill, got me registered at Lincoln. Let me see that. We'll have the full report later, Captain. But uh, New York Midtown confirms his story. He's a first-class detective on two weeks' vacation. Not bad, huh? Danny Jacobson, 25 years old, four years on the force. Two years undercover. Been decorated twice for valor. Looks like we got ourselves a genuine hero. Right. Okay, well, why don't we get together sometime and reminisce, okay? You want to get me a cab, pretty boy? Sit down. Look, you want to keep Carmine Terranova in one piece, so do I. So why don't we all just keep on doing what we're doing? Three days, we can all rest easy. What do you say? Carmine Terranova? Frank Hartman. You didn't tell him, did you? Frank Hartman's a protected witness. He's set to travel back to New York in two days to testify against Nick Lucchese. Nick the Iceman, Lucchese. The trial's been going on for weeks. Guess you forgot some of the details, huh, Spence? Need to know basis, all that bull. Why don't you fill us in? Well, it's very simple. You see, the feds, they had Carmine, Frank Hartman, on a murder beef. He turned state's witness in the Lucchese trial, and he got out of it. So they put him in a witness relocation program. Very good. Chris and Carmine Terranova became Johnny and Frank Hartman, and they all live happily ever after. Unless, of course, Lucchese's boys get to Frank first and blow his head off. Right. You see, he's under heavy protection. So they could get his kid and make Frank forget what he was going to testify about. Why wasn't I apprised it is, Phillips? Your only assignment was and is to preserve Johnny Hartman's safety. Anything beyond that is peripheral to the matter at hand. You know, you're getting very good at that bureaucratic mumbo-jumbo. So if Johnny went to the witness program, how did you ever find him? Well, Johnny Hartman's always been a standout pitcher. I just kept tabs on USA Today, followed the sports section until I found him. 
See, that's where you feds aren't very good at this. Why, Jake? What's your interest in Terranova? Same as yours. I just want to see him testify against the Iceman. I don't buy it. You spend your vacation making sure some mob witness lives three more days? I think maybe you want to make sure Nick the Iceman goes away for some other reason. Like maybe he's got something on you. Drugs? Protection? What can he hang you for, Jake? Look, I don't need a reason to want to see some two-bit scum sent up, all right? Why this two-bit scum? What's so important about this one? Because this one killed my partner. It killed my partner. I just want to see justice done. Yeah, Phillips, it's for you. Phillips. Yeah? When? Keep me updated. Informant in New York says a couple of Lucchese's boys are in town. I can find them. I know these guys. I know how they operate. I'm here. You might as well let me help. OK. You can ride with Hanson. Hulse, pinhole, you don't let Johnny Hardman or Terranova, whatever the heck his name is, out of your sight. Ioki, you stay in touch with New York. I want files, news photos, everything they've got on Terranova. Come on. Okay. We waiting for a goodbye kiss? I can tell this is going to be a great assignment. Hey, don't worry about it. I've seen these kind of guys before. All they do is talk tough. <laughs> You're gonna kill the guy. Oh, relax. He loves this stuff. This will only take a minute, folks. <laughs> Nick Lucchese. I hear he's got some muscle in town. I would like to know where. I don't know you. Oh, well, let me introduce oh. myself. I'm the guy with the knife. Come on, I can't let you do this. Hey, you look. These aren't 16 year old kids selling coke in the bathrooms. These are professional killers, and they blow people away for practice. You can't keep up. Take a walk. Anything Lucchese can do to you, I can do worse. And right now. He's not kidding, though. No. <clears throat> you don't know what room they're in. Wanna bet? <clears throat> well, what is wrong with you? It was a simple question, Mr. Uh... Carter, I'll ask it again. What's their room number? You think they were tipped off? No. I think they got lucky. Probably went out for a pizza or something. Kids are always eating. Who are you calling? Fuller, I want to keep this place under surveillance. Now, will you just make sure those bozos don't blow their cover? What do you think? You're the only cop who knows the ropes around here? The only cop in this hick town, yeah. Oh, really? Well, I didn't see you being so clever that we didn't figure you out from day one. And I didn't see you being so tough that you got by me and Ioki at your mother's house. As a matter of fact, all I see is a guy with a big mouth and total disregard for anyone's civil rights. I'm starting to like you. Johnny, I know who your dad is. So maybe you should call me Chris. And you are? Judy Hobbs. Ah. Officer Judy Hobbs. Well, I'm glad to meet you, Officer Hobbs. I'm starting to see the possibilities in this. Now, say I make a fool of myself in front of some girl. Move to a new town, get a new name, new personality, bada beam, start over. It's kind of like writing an erasable ink. Yeah, I know a little bit about changing characters myself. Yeah, except I can never go back. It makes you think twice about getting into relationships, you know. Not to mention magazine subscriptions. <laughs> now, sometimes I wonder if I'll even remember who I was the first 16 years of my life. Chris Terranova will just be this guy I used to know. 
Aoki. Yeah. Papers just through from New York. Thanks, Ed. Okay. What do they do? Spray paint the cardboard? Is there a problem with the pizza? Yeah, it ain't from New York. Hey, I didn't make it that way. It's just a fact of life. It ain't New York, it ain't nowhere. Except when it comes to football, then it's Jersey, right? Call the DA's office, find out when the Miller case is coming to trial. No running in the hallways, Philip. Save it. Who's watching Johnny right now? Hoss, why? Frank Hartman's getting cranky. Says he wants to see his kid one more time before he leaves to testify. Uh, maybe he's worried he's not coming back? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you the truth. As long as he puts Lucchese away, I don't care what happens to him. Nice. Blowfish, you've outdone yourself. Well, I like to put on a good show for these out-of-town guests. <laughs> there you go, man. Thank you. I gotta admit, nobody in New York could even think of doing that. Pinhole, where did Johnny and Hoffs go tonight? Uh, I think she said Sharky's restaurant. All right, run him down and then drive Johnny to the Sheraton Villa. His father's requested to see him. Guess your company? Who said this guy ain't friendly? Snitch at the bar, hotel clerk, me. You know, I was thinking. You're the first person I talked to in two years I didn't have to worry about slipping with. Slipping? What do you mean, slipping? You know, answering to the name Chris by mistake. Forgetting what my phony past was about. Falling on ice, you know, slipping. Doug, what's the matter? Everything's OK. Your father wants to see you before he heads back to New York. The catcher, too? Afraid so. Officer Doug Penhall. My father actually asked to see me? Yeah. Come on, he's waiting. The car's out front. Blue Haven Motel. Room 224. Yeah? Frank Hartman's at the Sheraton Villas. It's taken care of. Mr. Lucchese thanks you. Problem. I've been going over the rest of Jake's files and some photos. Take a look at this. Now, this is a picture of Jake and his partner, Marty Spaulding, the cop who was murdered by Nick the Iceman Lucchese. Now, this woman here is the woman that Jake said he paid $1,000 to to pose as his mother. You grab Hanson and you pick her up now. Come on, we've heard all that. Who are you, lady? I did a favor for Jake. He's already told you. No, he told us what he wants us to believe. Well, do you really think I'm going to tell you anything different? You know, I don't get you people. You come here from New York and you act like you own the place. Now, what gives you the right to do this? Did you ever ask yourself what gives Carmine Terranova the right to murder a man? Get a new name and address for his punishment? Marty Spaulding was your husband, wasn't he? It's not going to be too difficult to check out. I'm sorry. This time, sorry isn't good enough. This time, I want justice. Ma'am, that's what we're trying to give you here. Look, Frank Hartman testifies Nick the Iceman goes to jail, dies an old man. Nick Lucchese is not the one who killed my husband. Frank Hartman killed my husband. Frank Hartman, the witness? Oh, my God. And Jake doesn't want to protect Hartman. He wants to kill him. Not going to kill anybody. No, he's just going to tell the hitman where he can find him. Come on, he's going to drop a dime on him. I hope he drops a ton of bricks. You got a future, kid. That arm of yours says you are going to make it big. Listen, um, Dad, what are we doing here? You've been talking baseball to me for 20 minutes. 
You gotta go to New York. You understand that, don't you? I'm, I'm turning over on Lucchese. Yeah, I know that. Well, let's just say I got more faith in Lucchese getting to me than the Feds keeping him off. You don't think much of me, do you, kid? No, Dad, I don't. Well, I'm not saying I've been any great father. I mean, who would I be kidding? I just hate to go out like this. Oh, what am I supposed to feel sorry for you now? Or love? That was over a long time ago. Don't you talk to me like that! What are you gonna do, shoot me? Don't come to me now that you're afraid of not coming back and expect me to make you my hero. Okay, kid. I'm sorry I spoiled your date. Waiting for someone, gentlemen? Easy, easy. Come on up. Come on up. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. Just a car. Hands on your head. Come on. Hands on your head. Move it. She went to get some soda. Jake would have done it. So I guess you'll be moving again, huh? New name, new identity. <laughs> and you didn't even make a fool of yourself in front of some girl. I hope not. You know, I don't know whether I'm going to remember or want to remember Chris Terranova in 10 years, but I'm not going to forget Johnny Hartman. <laughs> Neither will I. I'll tell you what. If in five years you come out to the ballpark and you see a guy pitching that looks a lot like me, come by and say hello. You'll sign me an autograph? Yeah, I'll sign you an autograph. I don't know what name it'll be, but I'll <laughs> sign you an autograph. Fisher, get over here. This is Fred Clareman from State University. I've been telling him a lot about you. I think I've piqued their interest. Uh, look, sir, I appreciate the offer and all, but I gotta tell you something. I've been through high school, and I'm a police officer. I'm a cop, guys. So? 